it's good to have you back. Drug abuse and addiction uh, among the largest and um, most challenging problems facing society today. And in the case of Nigeria, drug abuse is rather rising than declining. Scary, isn't it? Don't worry, that's why we are here today to talk about it and possibly provide solutions. And to help us look at that is um, Dr. Chinedu Emego Ako. Chiemelo. Chiemelo. I'm so sorry about that, not Chinedu. Sorry, I saw Chinedu here. Chiemelo Emego Ako. Chiemelo Emego Ako is a consultant surgeon and a senior lecturer with Namde Azikiwe University. You're welcome, Doc. Thank you. I love you, as. I want to welcome you. That's the first time I've come to Good Morning, Anambra. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you're welcome. Welcome. Okay, it's good to yeah. have you here. Yeah, thank you. Well, you have heard our intro, and, and um, I don't even know where to start. Okay, but we must start somewhere. And for a start, let's start with um, what is drug abuse and uh, maybe by extension addiction. When, you, when do you say that drug is being abused? Uh, you say that a drug is being abused when the drug is not used as prescribed or as it should, use, it should be used. So when somebody is using drug when it is not indicated, if somebody is using wrong, using drug on under dosage, under dosing a drug or overdosing a drug, or using it as frequently as it should not be used, all constitutes drug abuse. It's a little bit from be different from drug addiction. Somebody is addicted to a drug when the person has used a drug constantly that the brain now requires that drug to function normally. Without that drug, the person's brain and so many other things in the body, the person's body cannot function normally. So that the person now becomes dependent on the drug for his normal day activities. That without that drug, the person now becomes ill and starts exhibiting so many abnormal behaviors. Okay, that's so the person addition. is now said to be addicted to a drug. But abuses using a drug the way it should not be used, it may be not it's not indicated or the person is overusing it or the person is underdosing a drug or but all, can all drug abuse drug lead abuse. to drug addiction yes okay. if somebody if a drug is not indicated let, let's assume the most commonly uh, abused drugs and cause of addiction in anxiety now yes, uh, tramadol and codeine they are normally prescribed drugs in the hospital but when somebody starts using it when it's not indicated over time the person now gets addicted to the tramadol and codeine, that the person now requires the tramadol and codeine to function normally. That without that tramadol and codeine, the person becomes sick. And even if when the person wants to stop using the drug, he cannot stop he it. He cannot stop it. Thank you very much. Uh, before we go on, uh, uh, let's uh, watch this um, video. We're coming back. Emails. And like their male counterparts, the young women also get hooked and will do anything for a fix. 25-year-old Amina Maisa started smoking nyope to fit in with her boyfriend. It's now taken over her life. I lost for what I need in life. And then I go on or go on to smoke. Everything what I've done, it's just not good for me because even my family, they are not happy for what I do. Maisa is not the only one. Cindy Kundi's one-year-old baby girl has been taken away from her by a relative. The 18-year-old's family believes her addiction has made her incapable of looking after the child. I couldn't spend lots of time with her and feed her right like other people, and they took her away. It really hurts me. Young women like Cindy often have to ward off men who try to exploit their need for a fix. When they see you, they want to sleep with you for 30 rand, 40 rand that you want. They take advantage. It's not right. Some of them are old and leave their wives to come and give you money for what they want. Unlike many addicts in other parts of the country, there is hope yet for Maisa and Kundi at this Dalmas farmland. Even though it's modest, with no formal programs, 
It's been a rehabilitation haven for more than 20 Nyalpa addicts since the beginning of this year. A community leader is using unconventional ways to give young addicts a second chance at life. Entry permit here is that you might... All right, we welcome you back. Well, we have seen that. Yes, so obviously, it's like uh, what we saw there is uh, addiction. Is addiction. Uh, addiction. Now, uh, let's look at the consequences now. These little girls, I, I'm sure this is not in Nigeria anyway, mm -hmm. but I, I know there are uh, similar things that are happening within our neighborhood. Sure, you know. sure. So, so now, this person is addicted to smoking. Mm -hmm. And then, obviously, there are consequences to that. If you see the way they are behaving, and mm -hmm. then that will tell you that oh, there is a big effect. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us on drug abuse and drug addiction, the, the basic consequences? Okay. Uh, for drug abuse, the first basic consequence of drug abuse, you know, drug abuse includes both legal and illegal drugs. The illegal drugs include now the cigarettes, the opiates, cocaine, marijuana, so when somebody starts abusing those illegal drugs, it leads to addiction. And when it gets to addiction, the person can no longer function without those drugs. And the effects are too many. When somebody becomes addicted to a drug like this, the first is the financial uh, aspect of it. When people get addicted, they do everything to get the drug. You've had our people that have been rich once more, they'll sell all their properties to buy cocaine or marijuana so that for them to be able to function. So it can lead to bankruptcy. Somebody that once been a rich man. Okay, societal influence, like the woman we just watched. People, when they get addicted to drugs, illegal drugs, it affects their brain. Ability to remember things, ability for their brain to, to function normally gets impaired. Their sense of judgment becomes poor. Hmm. Self-control, which God gives every human being naturally, is impaired. So the people ab behave abnormally. They get into they become sexual deviants, and things that normally give people pleasure in the society stops giving them pleasure. So if it's like somebody that is a mother, the pleasure a woman has taking care of her child, which is very natural, will stop giving the person pleasure. So the person can abandon her children. A married woman can abandon her husband. A man can abandon his family his children and wife, and be misbehaving. Mm -hmm. The things that normally give people pleasure won't be giving the person pleasure. If the person is, school, is in school, ability to concentrate and read becomes highly impaired. So the person can no longer sit down, listen to lecture, and read. That's affecting our sight so badly. Because so many of our youths are addicted to drugs. So okay. what happens? They learn abnormally from school, they become dropouts, and they become problems to the society. So these are the problems caused okay. by... Okay, uh, we'll, we'll come back to that. But before then, uh, with the video we watched, we saw that young people and research has shown that um, this uh, drug abuse is very prominent among youths and adolescents because sometimes you find them even in primary schools. Okay, mm -hmm. what do you think is the cause? Uh, the first is, uh, I think, is, uh, the first thing is uh, peer pressure that happens in school. And then the other thing is the uh, effect of uh, internet. You know, with internet, people now start reading that uh, if you take these things, they make you high, you get happy, which is, in the, in the, in the short term, appears true and uh, good. But in the long term, the person gets addicted. Then there is this peer pressure that's common in universities and secondary schools, that if you are not following your mates to take these drugs, you are not part of uh, what is happening in the university. So you're a Jew guy. So, it, so people, out of pressure, start testing it. And when they test it initially, they like it, they're happy. But over time, they get addicted, and it starts affecting them. It affects their schooling, it affects their functioning society, it affects their relationship with other family members. And it also affects the money they have. Some of them become criminals in order to obtain money to get these drugs because they can no longer function without these drugs. Without these drugs, they get very sick. Some of them have fits, a form of convulsion, seizure, tremors. That's the, if they are working, they are shaking. They can no longer think. Their brain can no longer concentrate. And they feel so bad with themselves. So they can do anything to get money to get these drugs. Mm -hmm. so, so that's their bad effects. And but where do you think we it, missed it? Where do you think we missed it for a young person to start indulging in drugs? Uh, is it? 
Okay, I, look at I, this one. Look at this one. Obviously, it's cough syrup codeine. It's cough syrup codeine. That's what they're taking. It functions like tramadol. That's what is in most in cough syrups codeine. I think the first is uh, education and enlightenment and family. So people are used to know, to educate them now. Education is the key, and the enlightenment program is key, as you are doing now. For people to know the long-term effects of these things, that in the near term, you feel good with it. But in the long term, it will destroy you, destroy our youth. But are this challenge we face now? Okay, you wanted to say something? Uh, you, uh, well, uh, the, uh, the one we know, the mm. tramadol and then... Codeine is the drug cereal. Yes. Are there other drugs that one can abuse? Like, but somebody can say that uh, if I take paracetamol, maybe... Uh, ten, uh, I was supposed to take it two, and I took it uh, four or five or whatever. Are there other drugs of, uh, mm -hmm. of such one can abuse? You know, when I started, I said that the drugs that are abused are both legal and illegal mm -hmm. drugs. Legal drugs are also abused, like anti malaria is commonly abused in our society. How? When, when people feel they have a, a headache or they have a tummy problem. They go and buy antibiotics and drink. Is there, Does it have any negative effect on them? It's drug abuse. One, the person is not taking the correct dosage. As I don't taking on that dosage is over. The dosing is, the person is taking is uh, too high. Antibiotics is not over the counter drug. You can just buy. Mm. It's just that laws are not poorly implemented in our country. It's not an antibiotic. It's not over the counter drug. You are supposed to buy antibiotics only on doctor's prescription. That is what is ideal. So when you buy antibiotics for yourself and start taking it's abuse. So it's even if it is ideal you for yourself. you to buy antibiotic, uh, antibiotics uh, uh, based on doctor's prescription, why is this sold in the open market and the government <laughs> allows it? That's what I can't really say why it's happening in Nigeria. If you cross Nigeria, you can't buy antibiotics in a pharmacy shop with your drug prescription. You can't. Nobody really? will sell to you yet. Nobody will sell it to you. You must get a prescription before they sell to you. Okay, I was actually... The Nigerian Medical Association, are they not uh, up and doing uh, regarding uh, this? You know, fighting, uh, well, ensuring that uh, they are the people that do the prescription so that people will not get them abused. Uh, what you said is correct, but Nigerian Medical Association, you know, it's an association of doctors. They, they don't have the powers to implement laws. It's only the government through its regulatory agency. This time it's Medical, medical Council of Nigeria. That's what they regulate medical practice in Nigeria, which but, but is a governmental agency. And then they can only make advocacy and say this is what the correct thing mm -hmm. to MDCN and to government. And they cannot propose a bill in the National Assembly? Okay, and they can propose a bill. Mm. Uh, but it's up to government to now, when there is such law, to implement it. Because what we're talking the challenge in the society. Mm. Is, this is affecting a lot of people. If you make an advocacy, then the government to maybe open their eyes and see how, what they can do about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th I think that's what NMMA should think about, to propose a bill in the National Assembly, and there should be a lot enacted to eat and get MDCN to enforce it. Because outside Nigeria, you can buy antibiotics, and it's affecting medical practice in Nigeria because there is what is called drug resistance. It's drug abuse that mainly leads to drug resistance, that when somebody now has a cough, if you now prescribe an antibiotics that will normally cure the cough, but because the person has been abusing the drug, taking subnormal dose of the drug, that antibiotics will no longer be effective for that treatment of that cough, for example, because the person has been abusing the antibiotics for a long time. Okay. Well, let's look at the way to tackle this menace of drug abuse in the society. What do we do? Are we going to continue living like this? How, what do we do to stop it? Uh, the first thing is uh, about uh, drug abuse is prevention. And in prevention, the first thing is education and enlightenment, as we are doing now. To educate the populace, to talk to them, for them to know the effects of this drug, mm. for them to know that. What is this when, one? Cocaine? This is probably cocaine. This oh, is probably gosh. cocaine. That when you abuse and get addicted to these illegal drugs, that they will eventually destroy your life. That the, the initial gain is, is not sustainable, is not true. And who, whose duty is it to run this campaign? My <laughs> duty? Or the I, NMA? <laughs> Anyway, NMA can be doing some advocacy. You know, NMA is primarily an association of doctors for their work protecting doctors' welfare and interests. Mm. It's, not, it's not a government agency. It has no power 
It has no power on its own to do anything. But it has powers to agitate for what it wants. What they can do is agitate and do advocacy. But then it has no power to implement anything. Anyway, cannot catch anybody on the street. Cannot arrest anybody. Cannot get into any form no, of social media. Really, has no such power. Uh, but know, they can agitate. Launching a, launching a campaign. But they can launch maybe campaign. Maybe through the National Registration Agency. Yeah, or to I agree. So many, you understand? I agree. They to can show do. concern that we're having this problem is too much. A number of people that a number of people that come to the hospital that present this kind of cases are too much. They're just too much. So what do we do? I agree. You know, the NMA thing. has a rule, advocacy rule, and the. Uh, trying to sensitize the public about it. Just as the media stations are doing now, the media station has a role, the government has a role, NGOs, all of them, we all have roles to play. Hmm. NGOs, campaign, education, enlightenment, that is the key all over the world in hmm. tackling menace of drug abuse and addiction. Prevention education and the enlightenment. Key. And I know because it's a, it's a menace, uh, which one is this? They're injecting drugs? <laughs> this, this probably should be... It, it can be amphetamine, it can be cocaine, it can be tramadol. All are, inject, are taking like What's this. What's that tramadol like? Is it, is it's it, a it, tablet. It's also injection form. It's oh, a really? common drug used in hospital. Really? Yes, it's in tablet form. It's injection form. Aye. It's commonly used to treat pain in hospital. Okay, before, pain we, go, after surgery. before we go, because we're on a short, short of time, what is the implication of this to national development and then uh, profound solutions? Mm, first, we know that the hope of any country is the youth. And uh, the abnormal, the, the, the true and uh, the bad thing in Nigeria is that uh, a high percentage of our youths are involved in drug addiction. And uh, this is going to affect Nigeria. Their education, their ability to be useful to the society, all affected. Their ability to, to be good family people are all affected. So the consequences are profound. Mm. And uh, the solution, as we, as we said before, is education and the enlightenment. Everybody has to be involved. All Government, right. doctors, media organizations, NGOs, everybody. All right. Thank you very much. Dr. Chine Melo Emeguako. I got yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, thank okay. you. Okay, Chine Melo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Chine Melo is a consultant surgeon and uh, senior lecturer within Namdi Azikiwe University. We'd like to thank you very much for coming today. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Very much. It's my pleasure. Okay, my and I've been around with Theophilos, my guy. So, so do stand by for the next yes, segment. Absolutely.